Um, slide number seven and eight say target levels of macro minerals and target levels of trace elements. Um, so people ask me in the future, um, how much should I have of this or that? It is written here in these two slides. Circle it if you want, make your own note. This target levels means that's what we're aiming for. Um, there's a couple of caveats. Um, one is that uh, on the target levels, it says a base plus or agridine 2 test, um, which is a strong acid test. Um, this is one that's done through Logan Lab, but there's a &L, there's um, Midwest Lab, there's a few other labs that do the same type of assay. Um, I like to use the metaphor of a, um, maybe a naturopath versus a osteopath, right? Um, there's alternative healthcare people and there's sort of conventional healthcare people. And you go to an alternative healthcare person and they're going to run a series of tests that may be different from a conventional healthcare person. Yes? Yes. You know this works? You go to the alternative healthcare person, they're going to recommend you know, supplements or nutritional advice primarily, maybe something else, but you go to a conventional healthcare person and they're going to recommend surgery or um, pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. right? So this set of tests is designed to recommend this set of um, protocols. And this set of tests is designed to <coughs> this set of protocols. So if you send a soil sample to UMass, they will recommend NPK fertilizer because they have a different kind of test, they're going to get different numbers, and it's designed to facilitate a different objective, which is to support agribusiness. Is that too, too controversial of a statement? No, hopefully not. Not in this audience. You've self-selected. It's a controversial statement in certain circles. People who are being offended are being quiet about it. Thank you for being polite. Um, I'm and taking this work here, this soil test, I come, I'm recommending is, um, was developed by a guy named Dr. William Albrecht, who um, was uh, the head of the soil department at the University of Missouri for 20 years, which is, I went to UMass, it's like the plant and soil science department at UMass, I'm not sure what you've got here at UConn, but this probably says a similar name. So this guy ran the plant and soil science department for 20 years at the Land Grant University. He was not a woo-woo, off the deep end kind of guy. Um, and just a quick story about Albrecht, he was a farm boy, which for me is always a good sign. Um, um, and uh, he went to school to learn about you know, how to be a better farmer and um, was really intrigued when he started to hear certain things. So the one thing, that, as I understand it, um, was he did his master's work um, overlaying World War I draft records and soil types in the United States. Um, and he saw that there were much higher levels of acceptance in what we call the Midwest, the Grain Belt, uh, of draftees than there were in Appalachia. Um, um, you know, and the way that you was determined whether you were fit to be cannon fodder in World War I was whether or trench warfare fodder, however that works exactly, machine gun fodder, um, chemical weapons fodder, um, was whether you had good arches and strong teeth. Because the last major war was a civil war, and if you couldn't march for 20 miles and eat hardtack, then you weren't fit to be a, um, you know, in the military. So the same way that horses were judged, which is good feet and good teeth, is how draftees were judged. But what was interesting was that boys who were raised in certain areas of the country were accepted at much higher rates than boys raised in other parts of the country. And you had German immigrants going to, you know, Illinois and going to the Ozarks. And it wasn't like they were coming from different parts of Europe or wherever, it was they were raised in different parts of the country. Um, and so Albrecht thought that perhaps the soil that the crops that they ate were grown in had an effect on their physiological development and that was his, his PhD research and actually was the guiding insight behind his 500 plus published papers over the next 20 years. Um, was identifying what it was about soil that caused um, animals who ate crops grown on that soil to either flourish or not. And he did experiments with rabbits and chickens and pigs and cows and would take, would take you know, different soil types, different soil mineral levels, grow crops on those different mineral levels, and then feed those crops to animals. And he could have, he cause rabbits to either increase their body weight by 50% in two generations or 
um, shrink and have you know diminished uh, litter sizes. Right? You start with the same rabbits, feed them the same diet of crops grown in different soils, and dramatically impact their physiological development in the first generation, second, second generation, etc. So <clears throat> Albrecht basically, um, as far as I'm concerned, was doing a lot of really, really cutting edge brilliant work. Um, all peer-reviewed, published literature. Um, after World War II, when there was a surfeit of uh, production for explosives and chemical weapons, um, and industry was looking for a market for that uh, extra production and didn't have one, they identified agriculture. Um, this is my personal understanding of the history. And went around and started giving money to universities to recommend chemical fertilizers, and then to recommend uh, herbicides and fungicides and pesticides, which were basically um, the, the, the ex ingredients in explosives and the ingredients in chemical weapons. Um, so there was money given to universities to study these and to uh, you know popularize them, and, they, and a part of the deal was they had to fire their professors who were doing this work that Albrecht was doing. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of really good research in the USDA literature and the land grant universities up until the mid 50s, um, at which point it was all basically stopped. And now we have this conventional, what we call now conventional ag, green evolution, NPK fertilizer model is really just 50, 60 years old. Um, it really came out after World War II. So um, anyway, what Albrecht found was there were certain levels and ratios of elements that correlated with plants flourishing, being pest and disease resistant, and, and with the animals who ate those crops flourishing as well. And so it's those basic levels and ratios which I'm going to be focusing on here. And that is the test that I'm recommending you take. It's a test that Albrecht designed to test these things with this perspective.